Well, hello, and welcome to another studio series uh, with myself, Daniel Snyder, and Jim Linnell, who's joining us today to talk about uh, the some swivel knives that he has in his collection, uh, which, you know, is any anyone that, that works with leather or tools leather, the swivel knife is, is uh, like an extension of themselves. And uh, so we're going to talk about this you know, vast and, and storied uh, tool for, for leather working. And, um, you know, it has its roots back to the early 1900s where a man uh, named William Salter was uh, credited with the, the invention of the swivel knife. Uh, it was patented under the Macmillan Tool Company. Um, and, you know, since then it is kind of involved uh, to what it is today. And, and Jim's going to have some some great ones to show us. So. Uh, I don't know if you have any as old as uh, the early 1900s there, Jim. Well, I don't know if I do or not. I've got some pretty old ones here, so it'll be fun to to show what I've got. Um, yeah, I, you know, the swivel knife, it's it's uh, probably the most important of all the tools we use in leather carving um, because, well, every design we ever start out with starts out with the swivel knife, and often it ends with that as well. So. Um, but yeah, it, it started out early on and I imagine, in fact, I'm going to, I'm going to zoom in on what I've got here and, and let you all see some of these up close as I'm working here. Um, the one that I've got here right now is, is my old faithful. It's the one that I use all the time, but that's, that's really not the one I wanted to start with that. Um, you know, you, you mentioned there in your opening that, um, uh, that so, some of the early ones were probably, uh, first done by Macmillan. Um, and uh, that they may have been the first ones to carry it. And I think I have some Macmillan here. Um, these, uh, um, uh, this right here, I believe, is, is a Macmillan uh, swivel knife. Um, there, and if you go back far enough, um, here's a, a, a relative of it. This one here was made by uh, C.S. Osborne, and, um, and uh, here's yet another one by Osborne. Um, those are some of the early ones. If you were to go into some of those early saddle shops, this is what you would have seen them using. And a um, couple of unique things about them is that, um, you know, today we have interchangeable blades with the set screws on the side. These here, the blades actually screwed into the, into the, uh, the, um, the barrel of it there. So, and uh, they had uh, different size blades that you could get. Here's uh, uh, some examples of some of the other blades that, that uh, were available for these. So you had some pretty fine knives there. Um, although most of the guys back then used a lot bigger knives than that, they uh, they used something much much uh, bigger than that. So, but um, but yeah, I th I think this one here probably is a Macmillan. Um, here's one that I'm almost certain is, and uh, this one here has some history with it. Uh, this one right here, I got a hold of a a set of tools um, that uh, um, a set of stamping tools and such, which we're not going to talk about those today, but I could. Um, but the set of tools, rumor has it, was uh, made by, uh, um, uh, yeah, hang on. This, I'll go through these, uh, these memory lapses here. Go through the uh, file cabinets. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, anyway, uh, yeah, quarter salary down there. Golly, dang it. Um, I hate it when that happens. Um, It'll probably come to you as soon as you're going to sleep tonight. Yeah, well. Um, <laughs> Anyway, um, this is this is hit one of the more famous saddle shops. There was uh, Porter Saddlery down in Phoenix, and and uh, or Ray Poya is the guy whose name I just keep, couldn't find there. Ray Poya um, used to make all of his own tools, but this here is the swivel knife that came out of that set of tools that I'm pretty sure he made. Uh, this uh, then you can in fact see how shiny that blade is and everything. It's really polished up, uh, and it's pretty wide. It's it's pr even bigger than all these that I have here. But that's that's one of his uh, his swivel knives um, there, and and that like I said in the in those days, um, if your hand wasn't big enough to handle that. Well, tough. That's how big they came. You know, they, they weren't adjustable in length. They were, that's what they were. Um, and kind of a related story. I don't have an example of it, but a related story. There's a fellow named Bob Brown that used to do, he did a lot of the, the gun leather and, and such for the movies out in, in California um, in, in the Hollywood days of the, of the Westerns. And anyway, he, uh, I got to meet him once. He, uh, but rumor had it that he did all this swivel knife work with just a sharpened chisel, um, and 
all of this it's cutting and such. And I, I, I did get to meet him one time and I actually made the mistake of asking him, I said, is it true you really uh, do all your cutting with just a, a, a sharpened chisel? And, and boy, did I get educated. Uh, <laughs> I mean, he, he, he went right at it and told me, yeah, no question. That's, that's all anybody needs. And if you can't use that, well, you're not really a leather worker. I mean, he, 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 you know, pretty well squared me up on that. But, but this here is, uh, is kind of the stuff that many people would have started with uh, in the earlier days. Um, show you another one here that uh, the next level that came along. This here is also a C.S. Osborne. And you can see here maybe some of the influences that came along um, a little well, bit later. But they, they made one very similar to what you Before you get into that one, I noticed yeah. on, uh, and I've noticed this before, on a lot of swivel knives, they'll have like a, a different colored paint or something uh, on the barrel. Is that, you know, I have one here that has a, a yellow um, band on it, and this one's an old Osborne. And I, I just was curious, what was the purpose of the, that color coding? Just to know which one has which blade or? I, I have no idea. Um, okay. my, my guess it might have been something that was done by the by the actual um, uh, leather worker that he marked his tools that way, especially if he was in a shop, you know, he might want to mark his tool set. Somebody else didn't walk off with it or whatever. But uh, that's my guess is that uh, um, that that would be why, because I don't, I have said that a mark, but I'm pretty sure that, 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 that wasn't anything done by the manufacturer. That's okay. just my thought. So, but anyway, so this here is, is where folks started. I have a, Another one here that's really interesting too. Um, I'll just move these out of the way. Here's one that came out of um, a uh, uh, Nakona Boot Company. There, uh, uh, a lady that used to be part of our guild here. Her, I think it was her uncle or maybe it was her mom. I, I remember. I uh, used to work for Nakona Boot and uh, um, used to do all the carving and stamping. And anyway, when I, I had a chance to acquire some of those old tools when well, she passed away. And anyway, I, I this is one that I just, I said, you've got to be kidding me. You mean they actually used that? Oh, she said, oh, yeah, that, that carved a lot of the boots that were, that come out of there. Um, he's, yeah. So um, I, so I was quite impressed with that. Um, it does have a name on it. Um, well, I think it does. Yeah, yeah, it says T-H-E-L-S. It's a Starrett, uh, Starrett company. So Starrett also makes a lot of, I, I've got some wing dividers that are from Starrett. Um, so I'm not sure if that's what it was made for, but that's certainly what it was used for. So Is that, uh, is that all one piece or is that blade uh, screw on? Uh, yeah, it, it's it's all one piece. The blade does not screw on it. It's, so now I can see the, the you know, using a, a just a sharpened cold chisel, you know, that's kind yeah. of step up this from this here does does swivel, you know that this little thing on top. But it's it, you know it 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 would work. I mean, if that's what you had, it would work. I mean, there's there's no question about it. That's that's a, a pretty cool um, old knife there. Um, so, well, let me let me show you some other. Speaking of old knives and and such like that, um, yes, they did evolve after that, and I'll show you some more that are part of that evolution. But since I showed you Ray Poyas knife, let me show you some other. Uh, famous leather workers swivel knives. Okay, this one right here, um, this one here, and this one here. Um, they all pretty much look like stuff that would have been made by Craft Tool Company back in the day. Um, mm -hmm. This one here um, was given to me by George Hurst. He said, "This is the first swivel knife I ever had. It's the one that I I got with my beginner's kit." And uh, he oh, said, wow. uh, "That's one that I used for years and years and years." Um, that I also happen to have in my collection of stuff here, I happen to have all of Ken Griffin's tools and in there was this swivel knife. Um, this is the swivel knife that Ken Griffin used as well. And you can see this is a half inch wide blade, which is typical of a lot of the, the saddle makers. Um, that's, that's one that he uh, um, used. And, and uh, uh, I have several other blades that are just really wore down. I, I took one of the better blades out, but that's pretty much all the blades that he had were, were that and then this one that you see here um a little fancier if you look at the yoke here you can see uh an l carved in one side and an r in the other side yeah this here was a swivel knife that belonged to lou roth uh if you don't know who lou roth was and it's got a, a ruby blade in it by the way 
Lou Roth is the guy that developed Craft Aids. He's the guy that developed the alphabet set. He was one of the early um, you know, parts of the craft tool company. And uh, and so this was his. He was a bit of a showman. I actually have a set of his tools. Well, a set of tools that he used. They are craft tools, but um, that, yeah, they're they're pretty fancy. Um, but so, anyway, he yeah, that's what that was his swivel knife uh, that he used. So there's some some swivel knives that were used by some of the people we look up to. And you know what? There isn't a single Barry King or or leather wrangler or anything in in the knives these guys are using. They're pretty crude by comparison to what people think we got to have today so sure and and so with that ruby blade um you know i've seen ceramic blades and ruby blades and just the uh, regular steel blades but what uh what benefits do does having a, a ruby blade like that or a ceramic blade versus not not a lot if in my opinion i i, I can talk about blades a lot too we um, when I was learning to do leather work, a, a ruby blade was something that was being sold. And you know what? It was the most expensive blade available. It had a synthetic ruby in the tip there uh, that did the cutting. And I figured, well, gosh, that would solve all my problems. I get the best blade that they make out there. That will solve all my problems with a swivel knife. Um, but I was wrong. It didn't. Um, the advantage of it is they do they are sharp, uh, but they, the disadvantage is that they're fragile. Um, with any swivel knife, no matter what kind of great material you think it's made from, um, they all still need stropping. And the stropping is always for sharpening it more. The stropping is often for cleaning it to get um, to keep the blade clean so that it goes to the leather uh, mm -hmm. uh, smoothly. So, but anyway, there's some some of the knives of, of some of the folks that uh, uh, you might have heard of um, that uh, had a lot of influence on on our uh, leather working world. But let me show you some others that come from, uh, again, earlier days. Um, one of the other fellows that made tools a lot for um, the uh, the folks at, at Porter Salary was uh, a guy named uh, Hank Eberly, I believe it was his name. And this is uh, one of his swivel knives. And, and um, it, uh, it, it turns just fine, but it, it isn't. Um, you know, anything that runs like at warp speed or anything, but the blade in it is, is quite heavy, as you can see, and it's, um, um, again, at least at half inch or so. Um, it is uh, does have some adjustability. There's a, a screw up here uh, so that you can get the, the length uh, out there a little bit, and then it does have a, you can change out the blade, but this is the only blade I've ever seen it in. This here is probably going to be, back in the maybe 40s to 50s is probably when oh, he was oh. making these tools. He made uh, stamping tools as well, and they were highly prized by the folks that, that worked at, down in the Southwest. They are Some of them are still in action today. They look very similar to a Macmillan um, type of a swivel knife. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, stamping tool, and, and very similar as far as style and type of tool. But anyway, that, that was uh, uh, Hank Everly's. I've never seen a tapered blade like that. Usually it's just all the same width throughout when it goes in. So Yeah, and there's there's different a lot of innovations coming along these days, but yeah, back back then, of course, then um probably folks were making swivel knives, uh mm -hmm. making blades for the knives that they were making. They were not trying to make one a, a blade that fit into everybody else's knife. Um, one of the things uh, Barry King does today, he his swivel knife, if you buy his swivel knife, uh, uh, he has a, a, a larger shank on the, on the blades that he ha makes for his knife. But he also makes a set of blades for that will fit into your standard um, craft tool size um, knife as well. So, um, but anyway, that, that's probably where some of that history there came from. Um, oh. Here's a... Here's a, uh, another speaking song. We're talking about the, the folks down there in Arizona. Um, this here was made by uh, uh, Ray Hackbarth. Ray Hackbarth made, uh, again, a lot of tools, uh, and his uh, are still considered probably some of the Cadillac tools that were ever made. They are all stainless steel. This is one of his swivel knives. I have a couple of these. He has his name up here on the top, uh, uh, Ray Hackbarth, Phoenix, Arizona. Um, I don't know when he died, but he was uh, doing this in the 50s and maybe into the early 60s. He was um, doing building tools and so forth. Now, there is still a Hackbarth tool company out there today. 
Um, but it's being run or it's owned by Lonnie Height. Um, uh, I don't even know the whole chain of how that got there, but I know um, Hackbar tools were not available for a while. And then a guy by the name of Ellis Barnes came along and acquired the name and started making tools. And they're very good tools. Uh, and they're stainless steel tools and everything um, made by uh, by Ellis. And he brought that name back around. And then Lonnie, after after Ellis passed away, then Lonnie took took that up and he's still selling tools. But anyway, and this stuff he's making is is similar. But anyway, this is one of the original ones. And once again, look at the blade. Look at the size oh. of the blade that's in there. It's a half inch wide blade. One of the other things you're going to notice about these older knives is that they were not the real thin metal. They they had some beef to the metal. They weren't these really thin blades that people um, think they have to use today uh, to do fine work. Um, that wasn't that was the case. That one is it's kind of like a hollow ground and a flat blade kind of looks pretty neat there. Oh, yeah. Um, it, and I, I promise you, it's, it's ready to cut. Uh, so it's ready to go. What makes a good swivel knife a good swivel knife? Uh, the hand that's running it. That's okay. So my, um, next, my next question was kind of, I was hoping you would say that because um, my next question is, you know, it, it's such a relatively simple tool. Um, and you see all these different variations and styles, but but largely it's remained kind of unchanged unchanged since its inception. Um, it is, and I've got a few of those innovations that have come along here that I'll, I'll show you as well. Um, there's been uh, a few folks that have tried to recreate the wheel just a little bit, and um, mm -hmm. but you know the ones that people use today are still some variation of what you're looking at right here. That's still the most popular style and common style that's being used today. Um, here's a, another knife. Um, this one here, uh, probably a company many have never heard of. It's called, the, the company is Jones. Um, and my in, in, knowledge of them is that uh, they were here actually in the Fort Worth area. I saw one catalog, I think, where they were advertised. I think Tandy carried them for maybe a year or so in one of their early catalogs, Jones. I also have some stamping tools made by them. Um, it's just a, an interesting knife. It's, it's again, not uh, adjustable in length or anything. It has a pretty decent swivel to it. The blade um, has a different size shank on it, so you would have to have their particular blade mm -hmm. to go with it. But um, And this one here is Angle. I actually have two of them. I have another one that's got a straight blade in it. But this here is uh, another company that probably, again, many have never heard of. They came and went and and yeah. uh, are no longer no longer around and, and, and haven't wow. been for many years. Wow. So, um, another knife that I have here, and I don't know anything about this one. Um, this one here, I have a couple of these in the yoke up here. It says Dell's Craft Tools, D E L apostrophe S Craft Tools. Uh, yeah, Dell's Craft Tools. I, I don't know who Dell was. I don't know where these came from. I don't know how old they are. I, I'm guessing they're pretty old. They, this here mimics a style that was a uh, very early uh, craft tool. So it would be back in the uh, probably 50s, maybe mm. even 40s, uh, just because of the style here. It is adjustable. It's got the adjustable uh, nut up here at the top, if I can get it loose. Yeah, it, so it'll lengthen out, and you could put a different blade in there if you wanted. But anyway, that's another one of those companies that have uh, came and went, and, and probably folks um, don't know much about that anymore. Oh, uh, uh, you, you know, you've been mentioning – touching on like some angle blades, uh, straight blades, you know, the, the different widths and sizes. Um, can you just kind of explain a little bit about, uh, maybe for those unfamiliar, why, like what those different blades uh, purposes when you're tooling? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I can. I, uh, and and uh, this is probably a good point to plug uh, a video that I did for Elk Track Studio. Um, and it's actually one of the classes I do uh, out there, Swivel My Finesse. Um, mm -hmm. And um, I, and I go through all of that and I, I even show and demonstrate each of those, but bottom line, what's the difference? Um, it comes down to which one works best for you. Um, when I, I, 
personally don't use angle blades. I don't like angle blades. I don't like the thin blades. I can tell you all the reasons why I don't, but I can tell you a lot of great leather workers that use something different than I do. They do great work and they use angle blades and they use, you know, thin blades. So it, it really comes down again, back to your original question. Uh, what's the best one is, is, as probably has more to do with who's running it right. than it does right. with, uh, with what it's, what it's made of or who made it or any of that kind of stuff. There isn't sure. any of these, yeah knives that I've showed you right now so far that um, would not do all the leather work anybody wants to do. I can do figure carving with this. I can do um, small, delicate stuff with this. But the, the reason I can is because the, the hands that run it have like 56 years of experience running that knife. And so that makes a big difference in what that knife will do and how it performs. So um, I mean, to, to attest to that, I before I even got a swivel knife, I was carving leather with a uh, um, an exacto blade, you know. Yeah, so, and 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 people make do with what they have, you know. And again, that that's probably how Bob Brown got started using a chisel. Is probably that's the only thing he had, you know. It and uh, when he and it was able to do everything he wanted. So you know, it's there's you know when you get something you like, you don't need to go find something better. If you got something that's doing everything you need, you don't need to go buy the latest and greatest thing out there because you already got something that'll do all you want. So. Um, so the, the reason I have all these knives too, by the way, has nothing to do with the fact I need all these knives. It has everything to do with just being a little bit obsessive about, uh, about my collection of knives, but there's history involved with them. This one that you're looking at right here, um, it, there's a, a little diamond on the, on the front of it. Inside of that diamond is the HD. What that stands for is HD Divil This. Um, they were a company, um, I don't know, um, uh, too much about, uh, I, in fact, I don't know that they made much more than I, the swivel knives. I do have some thonging chisels that they made, uh, but um, mm -hmm. I don't think they, that, to my knowledge, they were not into the, the stamping tools. But this is a great knife. I know some people that still use this knife every day. Uh, it's a great knife. Um, oh. it, uh, it it isn't, this one here is not adjustable. I think they made some that are, um, and, uh, but it, and they also take a, a very special, special size shank um to go in there um and it uh but that that's that's another one of those great great knives um oh. the uh uh show you one more here as long as we're talking about rare and unique here's one uh der Gervais carving tool okay um and uh this one here is is one that i was able to get a hold of in the box and uh uh, I actually have a, a, a thonging chisel I found. I threw that in there as well. That also has their name on it. Um, yeah. Came with these blades and so forth. It's adjustable knife. It looks very much like a Tandy uh, craft tool type of a knife. It's got a quarter inch wide uh, straight blade in it. Um, it, uh, you know, got a decent enough swivel. It, it does just fine. Um, but I don't know anything about them. I mean, on the box, I think, where did I see that? Maybe it's on the, maybe it's actually on the knife itself. It says, um, let me look here. It says uh, Cairo, uh, Newcastle, Paris, and Los Angeles. Yeah. Okay. Underneath their name. Okay. So huh. I don't know where home base was. I don't know much more than that about them, but the name of it is Der Gavace, And uh, um, that's another one that I have in the collection there. And again, another little bit of the history of, of this craft and, you know, how far it's come and, and, you know, how many people have, have had, have touched it, you know? So. Yeah. It looks like, um, yeah, it looks like they kind of started back in the forties and fifties. Oh bit. yeah. This, this easily could, could go yeah. to that age because I, again, I, I, I've never heard of them. I, and I've been at this a long time, but I, I never, I'm, I'm not aware of them ever being available for sale anywhere. This just came as I was, you know, acquiring some, um, some estate goods or something like that. Yeah. So yes, that's pretty neat. That's probably where that came from. So says anyway, they, that, uh, uh, just from a, a really quick article on a forum here, it just says that they started with a uh, um, really kind of popularizing the the crystal blades, the the ruby blades and sapphire blades and stuff like that. So um, I do have some of all of those blades. Um, wow. Again, the the problem with those is that they are fragile. Um, it's, it's what same problem you have with the ceramic blades of today. 
Um, they are, they, they keep, they're keen. They have a neat edge. You still have to keep them stropped. But if they ever touch your granite or something like that, they're ruined because, you know, a chip out of them, um, they're, they're just, they're fragile and you have to be um, very careful about that. So, well, I mean, that's definitely, it's, it's very interesting to see this, your collection, because it's, it's a lot of these companies that you, like you said, they, they kind of were one and done. They, they were around for a couple of years and they're gone. And the only, kind of in any sort of uh evidence they existed is is right there you know so that's kind of cool yeah, yeah it, it is here's a, a another tool this one is not as old as it might look but it um yeah i think this is going to get in, into the 60s well on one end of it it, it has a modeling tool a type mm -hmm. spoon on the other end is a sharpened blade um and it was meant to be used it uh where this came from, Tandy sold a minimalist sort of starter kit. And this okay. tool here was your swivel knife, and it was probably your pear shader and maybe your beveler. Uh, and they just had a minimal things in there to let somebody give it a try. I know one of the stories I heard George Hurst tell me once was that when he first started, he had, I think he said he had a, uh, a swivel knife and a modeling tool and maybe a basket stamp, but that's about all he had. And so he, and, and he, nope and no instruction. So he just started using that modeling tool uh, to figure out, you know, how to make marks in the leather and stuff. And he found out, yeah, you can get some shading with it. And yeah, you can kind of bevel and make stuff sand out. And if you take the pointy end of it and poke it in leather, you put a textured background. And that's what he used for a while until somebody came along and said, hey, there's more <laughs> tools than that. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, there's, there's certainly this, this air of ingenuity when it comes to, to leather working. Yeah, and that's 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 where where a lot of this came from. Um, the uh, show you um, well, let me show you another one. This one here, because I got a little documentation on this one. This one here, well, you can see how little that is. That's okay, it's, yeah, quite small. It is adjustable. It's also very lightweight. It's 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 aluminum. And uh, this is one that I don't again don't know where I acquired it. I something that I had, and uh, I was. Uh, um, curious as to where where would a little knife like this have ever come from and why would it have been made well one of many other things that i have here in my uh collection of stuff at elk Trek studio is um i have all of the uh leather crafters journals even from the very first one in fact this is issue one number one right here um wow. just came out in uh, uh this first issue was uh, november december of 1956 well in I happen to have also the next issue. The second issue came out two months later, and I was thumbing through this thing, and lo and behold, here's one of the first advertisements I saw. It's called the Bantam Swivel Cutter. It was a sensational new thing, lightweight aluminum, one half ounce tool, steel blade, adjustable. It carves easily, uh, or ni knives easily change. Okay, uh, anyway, buck sixty-five. Um, so this. Yeah, boy, that was a deal. And uh, I had no idea yeah, that that's what I had. But yeah, looky there. There it is. Um, I just happened to have one of those. Um, no idea. Well, uh, the company I was making was called Craftsman Supply House um, the, out in New York. So um, long gone. I mean, uh, the, here's, again, some of the early history of our craft. And uh, uh, on display in a little knife like that right there, it's, it's pretty... Uh, Pretty cool little little oh, that, discovery that I had there. So they were advertising that it comes in a plastic case. Well, isn't that just? That, I, yeah, it, I I don't I don't I don't have that, but uh, well, it's interesting because you know it's something that we just take for granted nowadays. And back then, you know, plastic was a big deal. Um, and a buck sixty five, you know, that's a that's steel. Yeah, um, and I've got. Uh, let's see here. I'm, I'm just trying to decide which ones I want to show you next. Um, I'm going to show you a couple more um, from an early age here, and uh, um, and then I then I'll go to a more modern age and and, um, and shift gears. But um, here's uh, here's one that you probably um, have seen, but you maybe didn't know about it. This one right here. Um, this swivel knife right here. Um, was made by Exacto, the same people that make the Exacto knives. They made a whole bunch of swivel knives. In fact, they even used their chuck mechanism here, like yeah. they have on their swivel knife to put the blade in. This one here has a blade that's uh, angled on one end, uh, straight on the other, 
And uh, so you can swap that around and uh, put it in there. It was not a great knife. I think this is aluminum. It's not heavyweight. The swivel is just fine. It works fine. Um, and so this was something that came along. Um, and uh, I happen to have here uh, in my collection, uh, actually have to, happen oh. to have one in its original package. Um, oh. there, there it is, X-Acto knife. Uh, this one here, again, with the same check. This one here had a different sort of a shaft on it, but it still operated oh. the same way. Um, and it was... Uh, Wow, uh, the cover. and it and it came with all that for the great big price of three dollars and fifty cents. Um, and I don't, I again, um, you can go back. You can see exactly has been around a long time. I don't, I don't know that there's a manufactured date on this, but they've been around a long time. They when when Leathercraft was getting started, they were already out there um, in the fifties and such. So I think this will go back into that era uh, pretty easily. Um, but uh, anyway, interesting knife. Um, Three dollars and fifty cents in the nineteen fifty six is about forty bucks today. So. Yeah, probably, probably. And uh, you know, I I picked up several of those. They they were not, you know, there were certainly better ones being made, uh, but they were they certainly did a a, a very good job. Um, so how did you so, come across one still in the packaging? I have no idea. I mean, again, I I've, I've been at this a long time. I mean, I. Um, and by the way, I'm showing you a few. Uh, last time I counted my swivel knives, and it's been a while. I need to get them all out and do that again. But last mm -hmm. time I counted all my swivel knives, I think I had over 130 unique different swivel knives that I've accumulated. Um, that's not what I'm going to show you uh, in, in our presentation uh, today uh, because um, a lot of them are just variations of the same style and so forth. But sure. I just want to hit the, the highlights of it. Well, that's awesome. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, no problem. So, um, with the, uh, well, let me show you one more from ancient <laughs> days. Okay, uh, one of the other companies that came along. Well, two more. Uh, anyway, yeah, it'll go on like this all night if you're not careful. Uh, <laughs> here's another company that entered into the fray. Um, this would have probably well, when we first saw these knives here in uh, in this country, would have been probably about. Uh, uh, mid 60s, uh, mid to late 60s. Uh, this was made by Midas Tool Company. Midas Tool Company started out in um, in in uh, New Zealand, um, and uh, that's where uh, they were called Kelly Tool Company, and they were selling tools under the Midas name. And this is their swivel knife. This first time I ever saw one with the loop at the top. Um, and many years later, and I I I was able to get a hold of a Midas beginner's kit. I've got probably I don't know. There must be 18 stamps in the set, uh, maybe, and and it has this swivel knife in it. The swivel knife here um, is is wood. Here, um, it has uh, a grip on it. It is adjustable as far as um, putting a different blade in. The yoke up here is plastic. Um, it does swivel just fine. I mean, again, it would do do the job just fine. Um, yeah. uh, but anyway, that's a. Uh, um, that is a, and this one here, I see it's got a hair blade in it. They didn't come with that. They came with a, probably a standard blade, uh, straight blade. But uh, but anyway, this is another one of those companies that came along and, and entered into uh, the world of leatherworking and brought their stuff. They um, their, their stamping tools were, for the most part, geometric. They were not, I mean, they did have some for like bevelers and backgrounders and pear shaders and stuff for doing traditional leather carving. Uh, but their real claim to fame was a lot of just very uh, ornate uh, designs. Um, and, and in fact, very similar to some of the kind of stuff you might see used in book binding, some of that kind of stuff. But anyway, they they were they were very much a rage for a while. I think I, I actually talked to Mr. Kelly one time uh, that started this. Um, it's been quite a few years ago, but um, he was still making some tools, but they they are long since. Um, out of out of business, I think, but I, I I don't know much about what what their current status is. But anyway, there's another some other innovations that came along uh, to the world of of, uh, of swivel knives. And then one more, okay, and then I then this that'd be a good place for us to pause after this one more. <laughs> okay, this one here. Notice about this one how the oh, blade is installed. It's a it's a, a straight. Uh, blade that's that's attached in there. Uh, it does set with a screw uh, on the side. This is one that was made by Rampart Tool Company. 
Um, don't know if you know that name, but Rampart, if you look around, they made quite a few hand tools. Um, uh, the, the adjustable groover, and um, they had some, uh, um, I think they had some edge bevelers and, and things like that, mostly hand tools like that. I don't know that they ever were involved with stamping tools and such, but they did make uh, a swivel knife. Um, and this is one of theirs. And again, the telltale sign looks very much like a, you know, the early craft tool swivel knives, but the, the notice how the blade is installed. It's a, uh, a just a flat uh, metal and, and uh, with a set screw to hold it in place. So, okay. um, Cool. Interesting idea. So anyway, um, that's a good place for us to like, maybe take a breather here. And I'll, I'll, I got a whole bunch more to show you, but we're, we're going to get into a more modern age here in a minute. Okay. All right. Sounds good, Jim. Thank you so much. We'll come back here in, in a couple. All right.